Howdy, Possum Patty and Little Miss Titi here. And we are back with the Daisy Fairy Castle. Somebody requested a castle in this size. This is the four by about four inch size because I had put in a link for the fairy size castle. And that's about a two by two. So I guess that's about the size of a twinchy. A two by two is a twinchy size. And I said, if you wanted to make this, this size that you had it printed at 200%. Well, just to make it a little bit easier, what I have done is do it for you. <laughs> so this is the one that is the four by four inch size. See, perfectly fit right on there like that. <laughs> so it's about four by four, about four by four, twice the size of the twinchy, which is about two by two. So now you have the option to download the patterns for either size. <laughs> if you'd like to make one for yourself and one for your fairy, or if you'd like to make a fairy size one just for yourself, go right ahead. They are free. They are in my Google Drive and I'll put a link below. And all you have to do is click on it and it takes you right to these patterns and you may have them and enjoy them and color them in and make little journals all of your own. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm looking over at the desk over there and it seems like Miss Angela Rose already has her journal all put together. Let's go check it out. Angela, you have your journal all completely finished and it is bound pages are sewn in and you've even decorated the inside of the front and back cover. Can we take a closer look at this? Thank you. Well, I was sitting here and I was getting together some papers. I'll explain those in a few minutes. And I got together some papers for Miss Angela Rose also. But when I went to take my dinner break and come back, she had hers all put together again. So remember, we were going to put the material with the rose on the spine. And then because the front and back cover was only one layer of cardstock, I can see that she added another layer of cardstock, this pink color back here that I was thinking of using in mine. And she did distress it a little bit. And then she added the material with the unicorn on it, with the gold stars. And she has a piece of painty paper, and a piece of music paper. And this is a towel, a piece of towel that when I was using, um, Sprays. I think this is like alcohol sprays or something. It's a cleanup towel. And then look, she has the tissue paper from Julia in the UK and a piece of tracing paper and some more of that paper towel. And a piece of paper with a picture of a crochet doily on there some more of that tissue paper, some painty paper, a little bit of embossed paper, and some fairy sparkle netting in the middle. And she's sewn it together with some silver thread. And then in the back, there's a different unicorn. Beautiful. It is simply beautiful. Angela Rose, here you go. 
Wow, you're going to have quite the journal collection, just like, <laughs> just like Paz and Patty. Your journals are inside the desk. Can we see? Oh, this is an old school desk. And you've put your journals inside. I see. You've got the one from Fairy Godmother Julia. I have to come around this side. And the tab journals. You're so busy making journals, you haven't put anything new in them. Well, that's okay. Some days we like to make journals and some days we like to fill them up. Well, you already got quite a collection there and you've got your pencils ready and I'm sure you'll be doing some journaling. So earlier today, I did a little recording and I was trying to gather up enough pages to put two signatures in my Daisy Castle. And they're mostly going to be maybe a little bit taller than the spine, not much, but just rectangle pages for now. You can always add bits and pieces on there. I was going through that box of scraps that I have, you know, the one I was putting all the scraps from the desk and throwing them in there. And so I had found the paper towel and this really old purple paper. And I added some of that tissue paper and some of that very sparkly tool. So there's one, two, three, four, five. One, oh, two, three, four, five, six. One, oh, this is an old calendar page somebody gifted me. Two, uh, wallpaper somebody gifted me. Three, tissue paper. Four, some of that towel. And it has the pictures. Now, I did this a while ago. I copied these crocheted doilies um, on my copier before I cut them up. And then I never used all the pictures. I went to the bottom of the paper pile to get some of the things that I have had for a long time and have never used. And then I just folded a piece of music paper and I have another piece of that tool to put here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's two signatures with six in each, like that. I'm not sure which one I'm going to put first. I guess it doesn't matter. I love both of these. So I've got my paper picked out. Put that aside for right now because I want to work on the inside of this. <laughs> so Angela Rose added on another layer to make the covers a little sturdier. Okay, so we can do that. And I'm only going to do it up to that crack where it folds. Cat just jumped on my shoulder. So I'll put pink here and here, and then I'll put a piece of fabric. And then after I sew in the signatures, I'll put some fabric on the outside. And that is the plan. So all I have to do is trace and cut. I cut one pink for the front and one pink for the back and they only go up to where it's going to bend because I'll cover that with some material. And as you can see, they are possum perfect. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's all good. You don't get them exactly right. It is okay. 
So I'm going to glue these down and then I got this cardboard out because I like to punch holes on this when I do the signature. So I'll be doing that in a moment. As soon as I get the inside of the cover done, I've got everything out here. All right, so it goes on this way. So turn it over and get some tacky glue. So I took a walk up the lane. I haven't taken you with me in a couple of days. And I just want to show you that the shin leaf or pyrola is blooming. And this is a little plant. It kind of looks like an orchid. The leaves look like little orchid leaves and the flowers are little little white bells like a lily of the valley but like a whole cluster of them they look so good this year and I have some in the yard they're in the back but these were along the lane they're actually across the street and I'm always afraid that the snow plows or when they come in spread new gravel that they're going to um, hurt them but so far so good that is like off but I don't think that's going to come up now and I know it's all crooked don't worry about it don't worry about it it's all good we'll put some ink on there we'll put some material on there Making journals is not for stressing out. If you see a vine going up the side of a tree and it looks very hairy, there's a saying, and I know I say this every year, <laughs> vine, be hairy, be wary. Beware of these hairy vines because that is poison ivy and they love to grow up trees and sometimes people mistake the poison ivy leaves on the tree for the actual leaves of the tree I'm gonna ink around these Yeah, so they kind of look like branches sticking out from the tree, but these are the poison ivy branches coming off the poison ivy vine. And you've got to be careful with that. And what a lot of people have never seen, unless they watch my journaling all the time, <laughs> is that... Um, Poison ivy has berries. Poison ivy has, it gets flowers and it gets berries. And people are always like, well, what good is a poison ivy plant? It only makes you itch. Well, in the ecosystem, it has a function. It gets berries. And yes, animals and birds can eat the berries and they don't get all bothered by it. I wouldn't recommend you eating the berries, but right now the berries are green, but they will turn color. This is my fancy bone folder. All right, got one side done. Now I'm gonna do the other side. Now that I have the pink all glued in and distressed, I am just cutting two pieces of fabric to put on the inside, just like that. I did put a piece of Tyvek on the spine on the inside to support it a little bit because I noticed that Angela Rose's was a little bendy the spine was a little bendy 
So I thought this larger journal might need just a little bit. I'm just marking where the edges are. I want it to go about there. I want to get that unicorn in right there. It's a little low, but I'm not going to waste any more material. So I'm just going to come up a little bit. I'm not going to cut those turrets and things at the top with the material. Oh, and there's one more plant that was blooming along the lane that you really need to be aware of. And its name is Tear Thumb. <laughs> and it will tear the skin off your thumb. It has a little cluster of flowers at the top and lance-like leaves with lance-like the leaves are lance-like and two like pointed down lobes at the end and the stem is sort of point pointy and it has a row of prickles that are curved backwards this plant is very tricky so in other words, if you put your hand in there to pull out some weeds, your hand will go in. You won't feel anything, but once you start pulling your hand out, those little jaggy things are going to catch right in your skin. And if you're a gardener and you do pull weeds, you may have come across these. Now this is material from the Dollar Tree, and it's got a bit of a loose weave to it. And it's kind of thin, but it works well for crafting. Especially if you're just looking for like a fat quarter to, to play with in your journal. So those are three plants I saw on my walk. We have a very lively cat bird in the yard and Mr. Possum has been putting the trail cam out by the bird bath. And I wanted to see if the cardinal was using it or the robin or the house wren or all the other birds that live in the yard, the red-eyed vireo. All we got were pictures of the cat bird. But there is another bird bath in the yard. So I might have to move it over to the other one and see if the other birds are using the second bird bath because the cat bird is guarding that bath bird bath all <laughs> all for himself that looks good to me now the covers are a little sturdier I should have trimmed this I'll trim it I'll put some more ink on it maybe you can fuss as much as you want, or you could just say that's possum perfect and go on with the next step. Cat birds are so cool. They're kind of like a mockingbird, you know. They've got that personality where they hang around and they... <laughs> fun to watch. Always interested in what you're doing. Try to put a little extra glue where, it's, where it might come unraveled. All right, let me get the things to sew in the signatures. So I always make a template and I make it the size of the spine. And this is about three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to have two signatures, so that puts them about a quarter of an inch apart. So it'll be one, two, three quarters of an inch. I came down from the top. How far did I come? I came down about a three-eighths, about three-eighths from the top and three-eighths from the bottom. And like I said, it's like three quarters of an inch wide. 
but I didn't include a spine with this pattern. So you can make it any, any width you want to. You just make sure it is the same size as this piece over here and it be like that. So if you want it wider, you just take this and make it wider. I always mark the top with a T. I want to make sure that this is where it's supposed to be. Looks about right. So I just poke a hole where the dots are. Three holes for each signature. And I hope they come out straight. They're possum perfect. They're possum perfect. All right, so now I have two signatures. So if this is the front signature, I line my papers up on the bottom. Unless I have really small ones, then I, I might put the small one like in the middle so the middle stitch catches it. Or sometimes I put it on the bottom so two stitches will catch the paper. So I want to line my template up with the bottom because some of these pages are a little bit taller than this area right there. And just make sure I'm at the fold. I don't know, paper feels all spongy today. Maybe because it's like 90% humidity or something. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so I just did this as the back. All right, so that's got to be the back now. And this is the front. Get everything lined up. Okay, then put my little template for the front holes. Line it up with the bottom. All right, so I have all my holes punched. And now I'm going to take the back signature and sew it in. Do I want to use the silver thread or something different? I don't know. Seems pretty strong. So you need to be one, two, three, four. But I'm going to double it. Okay, now the silver thread is made up of different fibers twisted together, kind of like a floss, like an embroidery floss. Because it's multiple threads, I'm going to use the needle threader to get them all through at the same time. And I'm just going to knot these together. And I'm going to put the threads on the inside because I'm going to cover the spine with some material. So I'm going to start inside in the middle. I'm going to let that dangle. I go to the bottom. You've probably seen a lot of people do this already, unless you're new. And there's always somebody new, so I like to sometimes demonstrate this. So you can see how an awkward beginner does this even though I've bound together a whole bunch of journals. <laughs> I still consider myself a beginner, right? Straight to the top. Ignore the middle hole, go straight to the top. There's my bird clock singing. The morning double clock already, wow. Make sure everything is looking good. And then you're going to go to the middle. But you don't want to catch any of the threads that are there. So you got to be careful about sticking it through. I think we're in the clear. And you want to be on the opposite side of the th end of the thread. And then you always flip it over. Check it. Looks good. Make sure it's as tight as you can get it without <laughs> breaking the thread. I can't tell you how many times I break the thread because I don't have a finger like that to hold the middle. Okay. 
and I do three knots. That's the magic number. I haven't cut off the needle yet. Two, make sure it's nice and tight. Three, I'm going to cut this. And I'm putting knots at the end because of how this is will split apart into three. There we go. And then I'll trim it below the knot. All right, I'm going to do this one and then I'm going to sew in the other signature exactly the way I did this one. <laughs> Maybe perhaps a little bit better because anything you do off the camera works out a little bit better. And trim that one below the knot. And remove the clips. Always make sure everything's the way you want it to go. First signature is in. And I will be right back. Okie dokie, my two signatures are in and they are nice and tight. They don't wobble at all. Looking good. All I have to do now is put the piece of material on the spine. And I had to go a little bit crooked to get the nose of the unicorn in there. Move some stuff as always because I have no room. Mr. Possum and I have actually been working on a plan for a bigger table. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> well, since I got this new camera stand here, I don't have a lot of room. I've got everything under the camera stand. All right, again with my glue stick. So those two white edges at the sides of the castle, those are just there for the material or paper or however you want to cover your spine. And that is how I am doing mine. All right, so we will give this a couple of minutes to dry before I fold it. And it is done. Voila! I have my little fantasy castle done and so does Angela so I just want to thank you for coming along today as we finished up our little mini journals happy junk journaling bye bye